Columbia Turnpike was commissioned by Congress in 1810 and was constructed between 1812 and 1815, costing approximately $40,000. The route of the pike was to run from the western extremity of the causeway leading from Alexander's Island to the boundary line of the District of Columbia and the most direct and practical route towards the Little River Turnpike Road in the state of Virginia. From the 1920s through the 1940s, an electric trolley service that ran throughout the county provided access to the pike, crossing the road several times, though not running directly along it. In 1928, Columbia Pike changed from a primarily cobblestone and gravel road to the reinforced concrete road it is today. Over the years, Columbia Pike has undergone many transformations, from horses to wagons to cars to mass transit. Arlington's most well-known road has been a central thoroughfare. A new phase in Columbia Pike's history is underway, but where will this road take us? In July 2014, the Arlington County Board approved a 10-year capital improvement plan to invest in various infrastructure projects throughout Arlington. The CIP is the basis for the revitalization along Columbia Pike, which includes new buildings and mass transit options, such as a new streetcar. It's something that people in the Pike community have wanted to see happen for decades uh, and for a long time we didn't have any new businesses coming in. We were losing our businesses. Our neighborhood was actually in decline, which is uh, kind of surprising in a thriving urban area like the greater Washington area. And so we've been trying to uh, revitalize it at the same time hanging on to those things that we love about the Pike the diversity, the income diversity, the cool little mom and pop kind of shops and, and restaurants, but at the same time try to bring in some more economic vitality and have more, more places that we can go and make it more of a, of a community than just a uh, collection of strip malls. I've lived on the Pike for uh, close to 17 years and I think it's high time for a revitalization so I support it. And I also support the process that the county went through in the form-based code and the neighborhoods plan that included a lot of community input over the years. The county board is hosting a series of neighborhood town halls across Arlington on any subject related to our community. Really the more important question is what kind of effect do we want on the economy in the Columbia Pike Corridor? We want jobs. We want um, revitalization, we want to see some newer buildings come in, and we want to see more retail you know, restaurants and options for the people that live there. Arlingtonians for Sensible Transit is a true grassroots organization that was formed by community members that had a great concern for the Columbia Pike streetcar project. Generally, the streetcar is is an unnecessary project. It's, a, it's a, I guess the best way to put it is it's taking a round peg and trying to put it in a square hole. It's not the right solution for the pike. Revitalization is not primarily about new buildings. New buildings are the most visible part, or let's say one of the most tangible parts. Though if you see what are the most important parts, you will see that it's the public space. The neighborhoods, parks, open spaces, Penrose Square, where we used to have a giant food store uh, and some shops in a traditional sort of a strip mall. Now we have a new grocery store, we have new apartment buildings, we have uh, stores like we had before, but we also have a plaza out in front that is just delightful. When the fountains come on in the summertime, it is Little Kid Central where they come out and play in the fountains. So what's happening here and now to revitalize the pike? By redesigning and rebuilding public transportation, modern affordable housing, and making general street improvements, Arlington County is seeking to develop the area in a way that embraces the future while keeping the past alive and retaining the distinctive culture of the pike. However, there has been much controversy over the construction of a streetcar. Let's appreciate that there's a lot of different opinions and a lot of different ideas in the room, and we want to hear them all and we want to be respectful to them all. The streetcar is not only for Columbia Pike. It's for Columbia Pike, Crystal City, Pentagon City, 
and it extends into the Arlington part of Potomac Yards. Generally, the streetcar is a vanity project, meaning we're going to have something that's uh, superior, gold-plated, the best, when it's not really necessary, and so it becomes an unnecessary expenditure of taxpayer dollars. This is a, just another layer of transportation. So to go from A to B, you won't have only one choice or a very predetermined choice. You'll have more than one choice. It's not the right solution for the Pike because the streetcar will not have a dedicated lane, so it will not really improve transit on the Pike. The only way I foresee it really improving transit is maybe a more comfortable ride and something that people see as sort of upscale. We can actually implement a bus rapid transit system along the Pike and along Route 1 much more quickly with much less disruption, obviously at a fraction of the cost of a streetcar, with about the same amount of regional connectivity, with much less disruption and more comfort than a streetcar. Some people will think, oh, can we do it in smaller number? Uh, can we do buses, etc.? The answer is no, we already did that. We exhausted the capacity and the abilities of uh, the, uh, the bus-based uh, transportation system, and we are about to exhaust the capacity and ability of the car-based uh, mobility. There, we have to think of better solutions. There's a whole host of other transit-related things that we can spend this money on rather than having it all sucked up by a streetcar system if you add the Pike streetcar and the Route 1 streetcar to the tune of over $500 million. Now, development is going to come along the Pike. It's already started along the Pike. That's a great thing to see. We don't need the streetcar to continue that development. Without the streetcar, we will experience some economic development. With the streetcar, we will experience a different quality and a better economic development. It's just more money into that. A bus rapid transit system like we're talking about will have about the same economic development potential as a streetcar. So we don't need a streetcar to protect our investments in affordable housing. We don't need a streetcar to fund our public schools. We certainly don't need a streetcar to improve transit along the pike. The congestion, the disruption, many other negative effects of a streetcar, streetcars on fixed rails, you know, a car or a bus break down, where's the streetcar going to go? If a streetcar breaks down, a car or a bus can go around it. With a project as large as the streetcar, expenses will be costly. How can the Arlington community manage to pay for such a project? Where are the funds coming from? They will come from sources that are now identifiable, earmarked, and exclusive for this kind of use. So these are monies that are there to be spent on transportation projects like the streetcar and nothing else. Our transportation capital fund is uh, one of the sources to pay for the streetcar. The regional transportation uh, dollars we have, state uh, uh, transportation dollars uh, that were part of the initial agreement, and uh, occasionally we may apply for uh, a grant that might come along for related to transportation perhaps, but we will not ask the uh, taxpayers of Arlington to put a bond in the ballots, for instance, that uh, is related to that will be using um, our operating uh, dollars uh, and we will not use uh, residential property taxes to pay for uh, certainly the portion of the Columbia Pike streetcar. Money is not the only problem revolving around the streetcar. The streetcar is also connected to the issue of affordable housing. One of the studies that the county rolls out in favor of the streetcar shows actually that rents will jump 10% in the first year alone as a result of the streetcar. Now is that the type of economic development they want when people's rents uh, are going to jump double digits uh, over the years uh, with a streetcar? Um, I, I, I don't think so. I haven't done my homework around the country where I've seen where uh, what we call transit-oriented development has cost to uh, low-income tenants. It has been cruel to low-income tenants. Uh, low-income tenants have been displaced from many places where uh, revitalization or transit-oriented development is created. So, if we know that, what can we then do in our community to protect if we purport that we value diversity? We need to put our actions into work through policy, and we started to do creating a plan that 
if the streetcar had been selected as the modern transit system, and I was an, an initial uh, strong supporter of it, I was a skeptical supporter at first, mainly because of uh, the concern with the housing affordability. The streetcar, as part of the whole revitalization project, will serve to really change the, the, the demographic in the area over time and generally through property values and rents going up. I mean, it's generally called gentrification. After hammering out a plan, we will not only be able to protect some of the affordable housing, we will be able to protect all of the affordable housing, 6,200 affordable housing units. Now that's contingent then, uh, protecting the affordable housing if uh, investment is stimulated by having a modern line or streetcar. We have been losing affordable housing on the pike as well. And steering against that means we have to create incentives to preserve affordable housing. In the next 10 to 15 years, most of the lower income people will be forced out of the area, except those pockets of affordable housing that can be preserved. The rest of it, people will be driven out by the rents. Despite challenges facing the pike, such as the loss of affordable housing, most people agree the revitalization is an important component to creating a better Arlington. You know, I think Columbia Pike is particularly exciting because um, it has been neglected for a while. It's really our next frontier. It's being discovered. There's all sorts of restaurants. There's, there's shops. Uh, there's new businesses locating on the pike. And again, this is, this is without a streetcar. Our community in Columbia Pike that has been debating uh, its future for a very, very long time and we are seasoned and used to uh, controversial debates. This is nothing new, not, nothing uh, you know, shocking <laughs> to us. Uh, however, the results have been, uh, has been, have been uh, very clear in a body of decisions and plans that have been actually implemented successively and the fruits of the implementation are tangible and visible. We disagree on the streetcar. We don't think it's uh, the right way to go. But at the same time, we feel confident that without the streetcar, Columbia Pike can continue to surge and be a very, uh, very important and critical component of Arlington. We are at a time now in Arlington where we need to decide, are we going to be a timid and stagnant community where we stay where we are and not as uh, open to investment for the future? Or are we going to think, we have a history of being an inclusive, caring community in which each person is important. It's part of our, our, our slogan. We also say that we're a world-class community with sustainable, residential and commercial our neighborhood where people unite to form a caring, sustainable community in which each person is important. Throughout Arlington's history, Columbia Pike has been a crucial corridor to the Arlington community. As it enters this new chapter in its story, we can only imagine the future that this road has in store for us. The performing arts benefit um, Arlington in really wonderful ways. When kids are allowed to express their creativity and have an outlet for it, they can do really positive things. They bring a reason to come here. If you don't already live here, they bring a reason to go out and eat. A lot of the arts programs have been cut, um, and it's something that, uh, that I think we see the effects of, um, sadly, uh, in, in contemporary society. Arlington's performing arts scene offers a variety of personal, economic, and cultural benefits, making Arlington a better place to live and thrive. The value of theater, in terms of theater education, I think is a way of thinking that is different from most of the academic disciplines. It becomes an avenue for a student to excel that may not excel in other areas. It, 
it does allow people to think outside of the box. It allows for personal self-expression in a really brave way. The performing arts are a creative outlet, so I think just within themselves they, they give people an opportunity to express all kinds of things, be it their own thoughts or maybe more importantly, they learn to express the thoughts of others and in the process understand and appreciate those thoughts. The skills that I think are most important are those character building skills. I've learned a lot. I've learned how to work with different people to get something done. In the workplace, you've got to know how to work with different people. It's part of the job, and I think it's going to really help me get a job later in life. Collaboration, responsibility, commitment, dedication, discipline, control, self-confidence, self-awareness, confidence, self-awareness. Remember how you always told me that my teachers were holding me back? Well, there are no bars here. Actually, there's a lot of bars here. But <laughs> Getting out of your own head. It's really not about you, it's about everybody else. To become an ensemble, you have to all work together. And so that's something that our band teacher, Alexander Robinson, has taught us. You have to all work off of each other to create the perfect sound. While many recognize and value the benefits of the performing arts, others would argue that Arlington's focus should be on more pressing issues, such as competitive school curriculums or other developmental projects. This has resulted in underfunding for arts organizations. Underfunding in schools has caused a huge problem for the arts. My own high school once had nationally ranked arts programs and now has none, um, 11 years after I graduated from high school. When we think about cutting it, we think about well, it just costs too much to build all those sets and costumes, but there's teachers. It's unfair that most theater teachers are a one-man show when they need to be at least two or three people to get a program going really strongly. In rough economic times, the arts are often the first thing to get cut. So you've seen the cuts in schools. Um, you see the cuts in uh, uh, summer programming. I think people don't focus so much on the fine arts, they focus more on the grades, like the grades, SAT scores, and what college I'm getting into, and not so much on like the extracurriculars. I was always into choir as a kid, loved theater. And it really did help me to become an effective communicator, public speaker. We start with uh, rehearsals, we learn our script, we learn our lines, we do tech rehearsal, we get to the show. So it's all about project management and execution. Arlington should support Encore or you know, other organizations because we're building good citizens to bring back into our community. If you talk to m most of the successful people of say a generation ago, most of them you know, a successful scientist will tell you that he participated in theater, in school, and that was a part of his thought process, that was a part of his development. Arlington County provides support to arts organizations in a number of ways. Arlington has really supported and fostered our organization, um, particularly the Cultural Affairs Department in Arlington County Government. And they've allowed us to grow, both through um, you know, the grant we receive each year, but also through the donation and the uh, space and services that we receive from them. We started off 25 years ago as um, part of the Arlington Arts Incubator Program, where at the time, if you were starting up a new group, they would provide you with free rental space and free performance spaces. We would not exist without that. We're 19, this is our 19th season now, but in the beginning, and the incubators program gave you things in kind. So, you know, they would, we used to perform at Gunston in their theater, and we would get that theater for a very, very reduced rate. We don't have our own physical space so we, here in Arlington. We don't have a studio or a theater. So we, go the we meet that challenge by going into schools. So I call us like Johnny Appleseeds. And so we take ourselves into schools. We have an office space at 3700 South Four Mile Run. We perform at Thomas Jefferson Community Theater. We offer classes and camps sort of all over Arlington. One of our like sort of 
dreams for the future would be to have one location where all of Encore's programming can take place. Despite facing difficulties such as underfunding and space confinements, the arts still play a major role in Arlington's local economy. It's economically beneficial to uh, the community. I think it's one thing that gets overlooked is that the arts are a major economic force. They drive the restaurant business. They also uh, inform the, uh, the hotel business, uh, bringing in millions of dollars in taxes. It, it, it's mistaken to think of the arts as just something that you're giving money to. They give back in uh, innumerable ways, financial ways, concrete financial benefits. Just here on Sh in Sherlington Village, which has probably, what, 20 restaurants and uh, us and the movie theater and a couple of stores. When we do not have a show performing, the restaurant sales all the way down the street go down. Um, so it's not just us that's being affected. We affect hundreds upon hundreds of employees outside of our building. When we have a show going, suddenly all the restaurants are doing a whole lot better. We employ dancers and costume designers, lighting designers, set designers, music directors, musicians. Uh, we rent theaters, so we are em employing people, plus the administrative staff, so um, renting a space. So we are really um, giving people jobs. The local arts impact the local economy because they get people out into your retail, into your restaurants. Um, they support a whole different community in terms of the artists that are that are actually performing on the stage. Um, it, all of that comes together to create you know a, a well-rounded, um, healthy financially and fiscally solvent community. I do know from talking with CEOs of companies, one of the reasons that um, that Arlington has become such a coveted place to live is that there's a vibrant arts community. It's one of the things that companies look for when they're deciding whether to move their workforce there. Are there good schools? Is there a, a wide, broad availability of good housing stock? Uh, what are the shopping options? And what are the cultural amenities? In addition to the economic gains that performing arts bring to the table, they also benefit our society in more intrinsic ways. Communities recognize the benefit of say having a beautiful park. There's no expectation that uh, a park is going to make money. Where's the money from that tree? <laughs> Why aren't those, uh, those soccer fields making a return? The return is your community is a great place to live. The general culture here in Arlington says that, these, uh, that what we're doing here at Signature or what um, the local community orchestras are doing or Synetic, um, that those things aren't frivolities, but they're necessities for a thriving and healthy community. The Dance for Parkinson Disease program is very dear to my heart. We offer it for free to the people who attend and their care partners. What I think we bring is the joy of dance to people's lives. Parkinson disease affects people differently. It can make people stiffen, it can make people shake. It seems to especially make people uh, turn inside and um, feel very isolated. So some of the people coming to take these classes look like they'll barely walk down the hall and get to the class, and by the end of the class they're doing West Side Story, da 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 da, and really feeling confident and great. I think we, what we do is we sort of trump the disease in the class. We don't cure, but and it does have so, uh, some lasting effects. We started an accessibility matinee to help kids who are deaf, or blind or you know have any other special needs more readily experience theater and we plan to continue this all next season because we want to make sure that everyone in Arlington every child can experience what we do it's not just about eating out it's not just about getting to your job I mean you have to have these other elements um, and it may not be something that you partake in every single day but even just the sense that it's right there for you um, on those days when you do have time or you need a break or you need to sort of uh, de-stress and and uh, become sort of real again I think that's sort of the way arts are so accessible in our community arts education is incredibly valuable and if we don't give it the focus that it deserves, um, we will be um, shortchanging the adults of tomorrow. There's all those studies that, that go into the fact that um, music, for example, in particular, 
uh, is very instrumental in understanding mathematics. Bringing you know wonderful music and dance and theater to a community just only en enriches it. We need to really keep the arts going, and you know the show must go on.